Hello beautiful stars, thanks so much for tuning in. I am a star and welcome to Source Light Star. So in this video I'm going to be channeling the nature of Isis. And the reason why I say the nature is because Isis is actually an ancient Egyptian goddess. But the gods and goddesses in ancient Egypt, they were known as the Neteru. So when we're talking about the Neteru in general, this is talking about a specific aspect of Source Creator. And in this video specifically, we are looking at the aspect of Source that is connected with new beginnings. Isis is connected with uh, the mother, like she's the Divine Mother. She's also connected with childbirth. This is the energy of starting a new cycle. So I felt Isis very strongly today and I really feel that there are messages for the collective. I don't yet know where this is going. So I really would like to offer Isis the stage to speak. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So unluckily the pile number two and pile number three of this reading got lost. So in this video you only see the pile number one and you will see me once again at the end of pile number one where I'm going to complete the message. That's about it. Please enjoy pile number one of this reading. Hello pile number one. So this is your reading if you have chosen the High Priestess from the Fountain Tarot. And we're going to be channeling messages from Isis. So. The first thing I'm noticing as I'm looking at the card is that she is seated on a throne. And in ancient Egypt, Isis was known under she who is under the name she who is seated on the throne. Because the name Iset, that's the ancient chematic name for Isis, Aset or Auset or Iset means she who is set. And set that's a reference to the throne of being set on or sit on a seat. So basically Isis, she is the throne. She is the seat. She is the seat of God. So in order for God to exist, in order for the divine to have a divine expression, God needs to be seated on Isis. <laughs> I know it sounds a bit weird, but the thing is, for creation to be created, there needs to be a set structure, a set form. And that set structure, that set form, that's the set of Iset or Aset, the ancient Egyptian name for Isis. And the thing is, I feel Isis in this reading is talking about something new that is starting to become a set thing in your life. So something new that is then becoming a set structure. Yes, you were thinking about maybe starting something. You were thinking about making something happen or also thinking about starting a new chapter, a new project. Because again, Isis is the nature of a new birth, a new beginning. So through Isis, Source or God is being birthed into creation. And the creation is the set structure. The creation is then God or Source being seated on the throne. And I feel Isis is specifically talking about something that is like an idea or something abstract in your life that is now becoming something concrete, something that you can grasp because as soon as it, as it is set, as soon as there is the structure, we can perceive it. We can Yes, we can perceive it through our senses, we can touch it, we can feel it, we can experience it. So I'm being made to feel Source is opening up a new experience for you. And I'm being made to feel that it was, it's something that you already know, something that you already feel, because I'm already being taken to the intuition, I'm being taken to your psychic abilities, I'm being made to feel you're very tapped in with uh, spirit. You are very good at channeling and also very good at, yeah, I'm, I'm being made to feel some of you have the ability to perceive the future. So it's almost like you have already gotten glimpses of what this is in your dreams or maybe in your meditations. But right now you're almost entering this portal 
where it's starting to become something sol so solidified, something set. Again, we're talking about this set, set structure, taking something from the idea, from something abstract into something concrete. And this is actually the function of the nature of Isis. This is the aspect of source creator that is birthing new creations. But we will see specifically what this is talking about for you. So we are channeling messages from Isis. Any message that you are needing to hear right now from Isis? Any messages? What do we need to hear? I'm going to be using the other deck as well. Messages from Isis. Any, okay, there we go. I'm going to take all of them. So we have the moon. Nine of Wands in reverse, King of Wands, Queen of Scepters, so Queen of Wands, again, a lot of Scepters, uh, Princess of Cups, then we have the Knight of Cups, which is the King of Cups in this deck, and we have the Five of Scepters. And I'm being told to pull some Oracle cards as well. Channeling messages from Isis, what do we need to know about Isis, one more, messages, there we go, okay, so, let's make some space, can you see, I think so, let me just order the cards for a moment, so we can see the imagery, okay, creation and surrender, okay, definitely, yeah, yeah, so it's definitely talking about creating something, creating something new. And I'm being made to feel it's something very, very dear to your heart. I'm being taken to the number six. And I'm being made to feel that Isis also resonates with the number six. Because in the Egyptian tradition, all the Neteru, the nine Neters, they are the nine numbers. And Isis specifically resonates with the number six. And this is also the reason why we are talking about sexual energy. So sexual energy, that actually is spiritual energy. But there is a connection between the number six and sexual energy. Also six hex, sex hex, six sex hex, that's like the hexagon. That's why I actually felt a call to uh, put the hexagon here. So this is also talking about sexual energy because this is like the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, from the abstract realm, from the invisible realm, united with the Trinity of the material realm. So the hexagon or the number six is talking again about the merging of the two realms, of the invisible and the visible, of the abstract and the concrete. And when the two come together, masculine and feminine, visible and invisible, this is then the creative potency. And that creative potency, that's the sexual energy. But again, sexual energy is spiritual energy. It's one and the same. So that's life force energy. The energy that we need in order to create. And as soon as this abstract energy from the higher realms is seated on a throne, like Isis, then it means that it is birthed into creation and then it can be experienced by the senses. It can be felt and seen and we can touch it and feel it. And the number six, again, it's taking me to your emotions, to your heart. So there is something about allowing these ideas to flow into creation. And this is going to lead to a lot of joy, joyfulness, expression, like it's being made to feel it's Yes, it's very much connected to your heart space because here we have also the number four. But now looking at this card here with the number four, I'm being taken to the four winds or the four heavenly directions. The four rivers also are coming through because there is a passage in the Bible, I think, or I don't know where it's from, that is saying that as soon as source or God is seated on the throne, there are four rivers flowing from that throne. And these four rivers flowing from the throne are obviously the four heavenly directions, but also the four 
atomic or the four natural forces. This is also talking about the four elements. This is also talking again about the four winds. And the number four, again, it's connected to the heart space. It's connected to stability. But also the number four with the four rivers, it's creating the swastika. It's basically creating the, the swirl of energy, like the with the four arms. The, the swastika has the four arms because it's, again, the four elements, the four heavenly directions, the four spirits, the four winds, and the fifth in the center. And then when it starts to revolve, this revolution is creation, and this unfoldment of these four, of these four arms is then creating creation, basically. So I'm almost being made to feel in order for this creation to unfold smoothly for you, it has to come from the heart. Like the heart has to be the center in order for this creation to unfold like it was intended for you. And this is why right now I'm being made to feel that the biggest focus is to surrender, is to surrender into the heart space, to really feel your heart space like consciously feel it. For example, before you go to sleep, um, doing a meditation, uh, listening to maybe heart chakra, um, singing bowls, or also speaking to your heart, like really asking your heart to, to talk to you or to, to hold space for your heart, hold space for your emotions. Because again, some element, something that has to do with your creation or with this new thing coming into your life, is very very much connected to your intuition like your intuition plays a major part in the unfoldment of this new chapter or in the materialization of your dreams like there is something about right now the biggest focus is on connecting it is about connecting to your intuition and it's very beautiful because when we look at the horse or the unicorn in this uh, case I'm really strongly being taken to this notion of the horse having four legs. So that's the number four that we've been talking about, the throne with the four sides, the four winds and the four heavenly directions. And then the unicorn, the horn in the middle, that would be then the number five. So the number five, which then almost transcends the number four, that transcends creation. And with the unicorn, the, the horn of number five, basically, that's talking about a spirit. So that's talking about the ether. So the four elements and ether in the center, the four heavenly directions and the heart in the center. So there is something about really understanding the importance of connecting to that center. And from there, almost allowing this flow of information to flow through. Because I'm being made to feel again, you will get a lot of messages or insights when it comes to the next steps to take or the next steps to like the high priestess has a scroll in her hand. So she has a message for you, but I'm being made to feel it is veiled in your mind. So if you try to intellectualize it, it's not going to work because there is almost this veil here because the message right now or your task right now is to understand the importance of tuning into your heart space and understanding the different nuances and notions of what that means. Like not just saying, okay, I am grounded in the present moment, but I'm actually connecting to the number five, connecting to the ethers. This can also be talking about uh, connecting with the Akashic records because when we are in this heart-centered space, listening to our intuition, then we are connecting with the invisible and this is very much what also the moon is talking about and it's so interesting just recently i was reading an article about the the meaning of the moon card because the moon card is one of the most complex has one of the most complex imagery and symbolism like it's a very very complex card of the major arcana and I was very curious to find out like what it actually means and where on the tree of life it is placed. So the 22 cards of the major arcana, they are creating the structure of the tree of life. So the tree of life with the 10 spheres and every path connecting the spheres, that's a card of the major arcana. 
And I was really curious to find out, okay, so where on the whole tree is the moon placed? And I was very surprised to find out that the moon is in the very lower parts. So in the very, the lowest parts, we are talking about the densest parts and the highest, the higher spheres is, so obviously the highest sphere is source, that's source creator, that's Keter, the crown. And this is also connected to Neter. So Neter, Neteru, Neter or Keter, that's the crown. That's like the number one. That's like the source of everything. That's like the atom, the source creator. And then it slowly goes down into the underworld. That's like the invisible spiritual world. And then even more dense than this is than the astral world. All the way to the lowest part, which is the physical reality, the physical density. And the moon is actually placed on the line between the physical realm going towards the invisible realm. But it is still part of the physical. That's why I was actually so surprised because when we talk about the moon, it's actually very much connected to the invisible, the unconscious and the subconscious. But the moon specifically is actually talking about the threshold between because in the traditional imagery of the tarot, um, the moon has uh, the image of two pillars, also two wolves, I think. Yeah, there are two wolves. And these two pillars are talking about the initiation into that which lies beyond the physical. And I know that there is also the notion of the dark waters and the dark waters being the waters of the unconscious, the waters of the invisible. But we look at that ocean of the darkness while we are still aware, while we are still in a conscious, awake, aware state. Because the physical realm is not only physical, but when we're talking about the physical realm, this is actually the realm when we are consciously awake and aware. So the actual meaning of the moon is about making the unconscious conscious or being conscious while we are diving into the dark waters of the unconscious. This is basically talking about, yeah, it's about bringing the darkness to light, bringing the invisible to the visible. And this can mean, this can, this can come through in a healing way. So in a way like making the shadow conscious, like being aware of your own shadow. But I don't feel necessarily for you in this case, because I'm more so feeling the energy of making the invisible visible by understanding the workings of the invisible. And that's why I brought up the tree of life. Because again, the tree of life is this structure that makes us understand how creation comes to be, how the universe functions, how the light of source creator, Keter, Neter from the crown is slowly, slowly stepped down in order to be materialized in the physical realm. But it also helps us understand how we ascend the tree back to source, how we then grow spiritually. And there is something very important right now about jumping into the unknown, jumping into the dark waters, let's say. <laughs> and that's why right now the focus is on connecting to your heart space, like surrendering into the unknown in a way. Because if we jump into the dark waters without being connected to our heart space, this is what creates fear. Because if we're not fully connected to our heart space, we're also not fully trusting the dark waters. Because otherwise, like, obviously it would be scary, like it's, it's the unknown basically. But again, if we go in there with this strong connection to our heart, where the heart is our pillar, our center, then we have nothing to fear because then we see ourselves as the center of the universe and everything that revolves around it is like just like a, a perception or, or a movie in a way. But again, if we are going in without being connected to our heart, then it almost is, yeah, it's talking about stability, like bringing instability. And the way you bring instability again is by connecting to the heart being stable and grounded within your being and from that place surrendering into the unknown, diving into the dark waters and seeing where the universe is guiding you. Like I'm really strongly being made to feel this urge from spirit to 
understand the importance of surrendering. Because again, when we surrender into our heart, that opens up the gates, the initiation. We go beyond the two pillars and dive into the subconscious and the unconscious. And in that space, we can then learn more about the nature of reality or learn more about ourselves, like understanding our patterns, understanding why certain things are like they are, or in your case, connecting to the Akashic Records in order to receive the guidance on the next steps to take. But the most important thing that Isis is wanting to help you with and let you know through this reading is to trust your intuition, to understand the importance of connecting to your heart and knowing that it is safe to explore the spiritual realm. There is nothing to be afraid to go deeper into like the I'm being made to feel you're being initiated into the next step of your spiritual growth. Because here, earth and air, I'm strongly being taken to this figure here. I'm seeing Isis in this figure, like this comes through as Isis, that's her. And she's channeling these codes, channeling these messages, this flow of information, this flow of messages into your vessel, actually into your DNA. So some of like light codes that are being activated in your DNA as a result of this light, like this yeah, healing light coming through. So it's almost the light that is activating the seeds in your DNA that then unlock this next chapter or the next, okay, go here or do this or like also the next um, something about your spiritual gifts because here we also have the eagle. It's about taking flight. It's about expanding your vision, expanding your, yeah, your perception in a way and mental clearing. So yeah, there is very much something about not allowing the thoughts to go in the way. And that's why there is this stabilization happening, like this physical integration, like the integration of the ethers into the earth. And that's actually exactly what Isis is doing. Like she is the nature that is bridging the spirit realm and materializing it into creation. Like She's giving form to everything and that's what I'm being made to feel like something new is being formed for you. And now I'm actually being told to pull some more tarot cards. Any more messages, any clarification from Isis, any messages for my pal number one. Okay, yes, 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 yes. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We have the Emperor, the Chariot and the King of Wands. And it's so beautiful that we have two Kings here. So this is very much taking me to the process of alchemy, alchemization. So I'm being made to feel your gifts. They are definitely expanding, like you're definitely going through an upgrade because fire and water that's also talking about yin and yang, divine feminine, divine masculine, and also earth and air. Like this is, there is a strong notion of bridging the poles, bridging the, the realms, bridging the polarities, and really coming back to the center. And from that centered space where you are connected to your heart, moving forward. And this is exactly what the, the chariot is talking about. So the chariot is talking about having being balanced in both realms, the physical and the spiritual. Because only when we are fully balanced in both, we can jump on this chariot and move forward. Only when there is, let's say, a new structure being solidified for you, in a way like, um, I'm really being made to feel that your light body is being worked on right now. Because also with the Queen of Scepters, the, um, the Queen of Wands, this is also talking about pineal gland activation. So it's really the activation of your power, the activation of your power that allows you to navigate the invisible realm in an even deeper level. Because here we have Pisces and here Pisces again. So it's talking about the development of your clair sentient abilities or clair audience, clair cognizance, whatever clair is more predominant for you. 
I'm being made to feel this is what is shifting for you. And I'm also being made to feel it has something to do with your soul's purpose. I'm strongly being taken to the age of Aquarius here. Also the shifting of the ages, Leo energy here. So definitely it's talking about Leo again. So a lot of lion energy. So some of you might have Leo in your chart or a lot of Pisces also. Pisces in, and Leo is very strong. Um, but it's actually also talking about, yes, everything that felt stagnant or everything that felt like you were almost blocked in a way was preparing you to move forward in this new chapter where, yes, that's the thing, where you don't even know. <laughs> you don't know what is coming because right now you're being asked to surrender. Right now you're being asked to trust. Like what I'm really noticing right now, looking at this card here, the lion has a green gem on their heart. So this is also reminding me of the strength card. So there is something about knowing the importance of what true strength is. Because strength is not this forcefully moving forward or forcefully trying to make things happen. Or like with this energy here, I'm being made to feel you wanted to move forward. You wanted to push something forward. But since it was in reverse, it was almost the universe stopping everything, like really bringing in this really quiet period in your life where things have been very, very slow so that you could really understand the importance of listening to your heart. And once you are surrendering fully to the heart space, then you can move forward being guided by the heart. And this is what true strength is. Again, st true strength is not pushing forward and trying to force things to happen, but it's actually walking in the knowingness that I'm going to end up where I need to be anyway. Like uh, my heart knows, I, I allow my heart to lead me before I even see anything or before it makes sense. So I'm being made to feel some of you are really confused right now as to what to do, how to move forward. And the message again is not, it's not about intellectualizing it. It's not about allowing your thoughts to go in the way but really really strongly like I, I know I'm repeating it over and over again but knowing the importance of connecting to the heart space because from there everything is unfolding much smoother and with the chariot here as the confirmation like it's gonna allow you to move forward again in a way that is much more balanced and also in a way where things are gonna be delivered to you so this is the point where the reading stopped and I couldn't just let it there because I was like, uh, uh Isis, we need to finish the message. So we are calling in Isis to finish the message. And I also didn't look at the reading now recently. So I don't really know what the reading is about. So let's see. Dearest Isis, how can we complete the message? What do we need to know? What messages are there for the collective? How can we finish this message? Okay. Oh, wow. So many cards that I didn't expect. Wait. All right. Okay. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm being told before I look into the cards, I'm also pulling two of these. Messages from Isis. Oh, here they are. Or three. Okay. So, we have the vow. We have the stone. We have the flame. Then we have five of cups, judgment, ten of swords, seven of pentacles, the empress, and the three of cups. I'm hearing the fog is lifting, things are getting clearer and it is almost like this aspect of the flame, like I'm really being shown now like clouds that are lifting so that this light of the flame can shine in its fullest. So there is also something about with the energy of the five of cups which fell on the floor. There is something about the importance of knowing why the fog was there because with the Five of Cups, I'm also feeling this energy of 
not disappointment, but maybe sadness or frustration or a sense of disappointment even because things were stagnant or things were cloudy or you couldn't really see a way forward or it's almost like a, maybe not even seeing your own light, maybe not even, even seeing your own potential or the light of your soul or there is definitely this notion of fog lifting, the way clearing so that again this flame can shine through. And with the stone, this is also talking about um, gold, alchemical gold. And alchemical gold is higher self-embodiment with the flame, knowing that we are the eternal spirit. And with these fishes, again, it's this energy of abundance, a lot of abundance with the empress and the star and this alchemical gold. So definitely look forward for things to shift. Look forward for justice to play out in the most magical way. Oh, and I love it. And the High Priestess shows up once more. This was actually supposed to be the, to be the card of pile number three. So she shows up again once more. Oh, and our cat also shows up. And I love it, baby. Yes, she was present on the video that I recorded before. Yes, you're so loved. We love you. Okay, I have to finish the reading because the cat is taking over and she deserves to be cuddled. So this is your message for today. Definitely look forward for abundance to come. Last thing that I wanted to say, the High Priestess shows up once again with this pomegranate in the hand. And the pomegranate is a symbol for abundance. The pomegranate is this energy of fruitfulness and completion, reaping the rewards, finally having these fruits in our basket. So this is what's happening next, us picking the fruits and enjoying them and taking flight while doing the things we love. That's what Isis helps us to do right now. So you can claim this message if you resonate it. Uh, please let me know if you did. And I'm also offering personal readings and uh, healing sessions. So you can reach out to me at any time. You can find all the information on my website. And I hope that you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope to see you in the next video.